Hey everyone, hopefully this is working. Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. I'm over here in the garage getting everything ready for winter because it was like 23 degrees last night. So I figure I'd do my monologue from here. <laughs> We're going to get into some biker news, trust me. I want to thank everybody that's joined the Throttle Club. I'll be mentioning in, uh, the new members in the biker news section. But boy, I'm pretty pissed off right now. I received an email from a subscriber and said, Hey, Hollywood, are you selling on this website your stuff? Uh, and I only sell on one website, and that's Teespring. Well, looks like I got hit by the Chinese, man, because they took my logo. They're starting to put it on keychains and stuff. So... I emailed the website, we're going back and forth, back and forth. We'll see how that goes. You have to be wary of the places you're shopping at online. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, yeah, I'm a biker news type guy. But they're selling, and everybody knows this, they're selling motorcycle club patches online. And I just had to speak about it. Even though I've done a couple years ago, I've done on this subject. But they're selling Hell's Angels stuff. They're selling Outlaw stuff, Pagans, Mongols, the whole nine yards. If you have to go on the internet to get one of these patches, something is really wrong with you. And not only that, it's very dangerous for you to do that type of stuff. We actually covered a story where a guy north of us in Wisconsin, uh, he was ex-Iron Order or something. He actually went and bought a Hell's Angel freaking patch with Illinois on the bottom. Everybody's seen him. We did a, a story on him. And let's just say he got rid of that patch really freaking quick. But the stupidity of even trying to buy a patch, what is wrong with you? Now my logo being stolen, and there's a reason why, because people ask me, well, why do you, are you missing a T in throttle? I do that so I can spot these fake logos right away. And of course they had it, but I got the, you know, that's how I do it. I'll spot it by, leaving a letter out here, leaving a letter out there, because you never know with uh, these Chinese at what they're going to be doing, and it's mostly Chinese that are doing this crap. Uh, you'll see it coming from overseas. There's a lot of different ways to spot fake patches, the quality, uh, the size of the rockers, the size of the letters. But I think it just comes back to this day and age where people can actually think they can buy something like this. And I'm going to show a couple examples when we go into the biker news segment. But you got these people, the descriptions that they're putting on these products is heinous. But you, you got people that believe in it. You got people that actually believe that you can buy these patches online. Now, is that an overview of a big problem going on in the scene? I don't know, because you haven't been hearing a lot about pop-up clubs anymore. Maybe that's kind of settled down. I don't think so, but maybe it has. Maybe they decided to go RC instead of MC. Who knows? But a couple of years ago, it was huge, this pop-up club stuff. Is it that mentality that has led to people thinking that they can actually buy this stuff online. I have no freaking clue whatsoever. Because everything's changed. It really has. Everything has changed. You know, for, and you know what? The older guys would probably agree with me. Now, when I talk older guys, I'm probably talking 40 and up. You know, 40 all the way up. Because I do talk about how things have changed, and a lot of people say, well, this is 2020 now, this ain't the 1990s, it is what it is. I always thought that 
the way bikers thought were universal and it went over a time period, you know, it went against everything, the norm. But lately I'm realizing that's probably not true. Everybody changes with the different generation coming in. You would have never thought, could you imagine some of these ads being put in Easy Rider magazine where you can buy a Hells Angel or a 1% or club's patch right from our magazine? Because back then we didn't have internet or any of that stuff. No, it would have never happened. But again, we didn't have this Chinese infiltration either. Uh, and that's why I really think it's really important if you're going out to vote, because by the time you see this, it's going to be election morning. Hopefully you vote for America and not the Chinese, man, because they're flooding everything. You know, they're stealing all kinds of copyrighted materials. They're, you know, they're stealing our technology, our companies, and now they're even to motorcycle club patches because they got idiots that will actually buy it. And they're banking off of this where you have these clubs, their members, they put in blood, sweat, and tears into their club to become a member of the club. And next thing you know, they got to face this crap on the internet. If you don't believe me, you know, I'll show you everything that's going. Uh, you can just go in the shopping uh, tab of Google and you'll see them all pop up. And the bad thing about it with these overseas companies is you can hardly do anything about it. Yeah, you can put in a copyright complaint in if the website selling it will do anything about it. But most of the time, they're making money off of what you're doing. They're making money off the motorcycle clubs. And not only that, they are watering it down so bad, it's unbelievable. Because it makes people who actually buy those crap patches a bunch of idiots, and it makes bikers look bad. I think it's disgusting. But with the internet comes all these different problems. There's a lot of stuff you can't do to fight back. You know, what are you going to do? Spend tons of money on an attorney, try to take them to court in the U.S., where a court order in the U.S. don't mean nothing in China? China is on the rise in this world, man. They're trying to overtake us, and they're stealing all down the way, man, just like commies always have been. If you're thinking about buying one of these patches, you need to think to yourself, are you that gullible, for one? Two, are you that scary that you can't get your ass up and actually go and prospect or hang around the club? Three, what advantage do you really think you're going to get wearing a fake patch when other bikers are around and know it's fake? You're going to end up getting hurt is what's going to happen. Nothing, no good is going to come out of this. So why go do it? Well, I guess some people are just starved for attention. They go out to get their Harleys or get their cruiser bikes, want to get the chicks, they want to get that reputation off of others' backs, but they don't want to put the work in for it. It was funny when we called, and I think the article's still up. I have to check HarleyLiberty.com to find out if it's up, but we hit this guy hard. We had his address, the whole nine yards. It's easy to find out this information on the internet. For those who actually know the internet, you can find out anything you want to find out, especially on the dark web. So I guess with this monologue, what I'm doing is I guess I'm pleading with you ignorant fools out there, don't go to these Chinese companies for these patches. You're wasting your money. They ain't worth nothing because they're fake. You didn't earn it. So why bother wasting your damn money? 
And me, I'm lucky because I just found keychains with my logo on it. God knows if they try that shirt crap, I'm really going to be pissed. But I can just imagine what the, the clubs are feeling like right now. And you kind of can understand why they do get standoffish with civilians. Because it's this kind of shit that makes it happen. They just want to stay in their own little corner. That's what's happening. They don't want to be caught up in all this crap. All these fakes, all these wannabes. If you want to go buy a patch, go buy a patch that's freaking not a club patch, man. There's a lot of cool back patches that you can put on your vest. You'd probably get as much poontang as you want with just that. Because the civilians don't know any different. Just don't go out there and put your health at risk, your life at risk, because of some description that was put up on a website to sell something. You're talking about American clubs that they're featuring in these ads and selling their fake patches with. Your money's going to China, though. It's not right. Hopefully, if you're one of those that are watching the show, see this, and we're thinking about doing it, don't do it. it, it it's, don't do it. You're just a moron. And then, who the hell wants to consider you're, you a biker if you got to go do that kind of stuff? Like I said, go on to Amazon, go on to other embroidery stores and get you a, a patch that you want. Get you something like Dilly Gaff. I don't freaking know. Just don't go and get a motorcycle club color patch. That's what I have to say for the monologue, man. Uh, I just shook my head. I couldn't for believe it. And thanks for the subscriber who let me know about it. Uh, if you own a business and you have logos on the internet, you need to get out there and check as well if they're using your stuff without uh, your... Uh, permission. Insane Throttle, uh, Biker News, and Motorcycle Madhouse, The Skull, Rock On, they are all copyrighted and trademarked. Every one of them. So now you know why I forget, uh, I didn't forget, but I didn't uh, put that T in the throttle because I'd have spotted in a heart second. So make sure you get out there and check if you got your logos out on the internet because. Anything you put on the internet, like Facebook or uh, a Google web or a website, it comes up on Google. You just hit the search engine, click on images, you'll see it all happening. Be smart. Don't be dumb. Don't purchase them damn patches, man. It's ignorant. So let's get into some biker news. Get back into the studio. But I, you know what? I figured come out here. You know, I've been sweeping leaves from this damn garage all day, and every time I come back, there's more leaves. You know, that's northern Illinois in the fall, and it's freezing cold out here. So, let's get to the biker news. Unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Okay, welcome back. Let's go on to what I was talking about earlier in the monologue. All you have to do, for example, is Google Hell's Angels Patch. Hell's Angels Patch. And you see come up, Wish is one of the worst ones for this one. You'll see a three-piece lot, Nomads, 1% or MC patches for 15 bucks, And then Films Jackets in the Leather City. They'll actually put you a Hell's Angels patch on a leather vest for you for $189 and 
Yes! <laughs> uh, then you got Outlaws with the Nomads patch on. You know, that's out of eBay. This is ridiculous. Then again, the Mongols out of California. Wish. And now, you even got on T Public, and somebody should report that one. Hell Satan out of Springfield with the death head on it. These people are a lot, making a lot of money and they're doing it because of your ignorance. Men's denim biker pagan MC vest jackets creator. Then they got the, the support stuff going on. Uh, then a Hells Angels patch from Edisey. Uh Just ridiculous stuff here. Posters. They're making a ton of money off of the club scene, and you people who buy this crap are the ones supporting them. They even got an Etsy uh, flannel shirt, Support 81. And like I said, they're selling the patches, a Cal's Angels California vest for $159. It's in stock. It says, and this is what people fall for, add the famous vest recognized all over the globe for the Hells Angels embroidered on the back while the V-neck makes you look fit. The exquisite logo is so unique and out of the box that it makes the Hells Angels jacket a must. People fall for this. I'm serious. The way they're making it sound is... You don't have to earn your patch. You can just throw it on. The premium quality leather of the vest paired up with an inner soft layer makes it super comfortable and highly durable. We want nothing but the best for our customers. Well, if you want nothing best for your customers, why the hell are you selling this jacket? Because what you're going to do is get your customers hurt. <laughs> Uh, then it talks about a YKK zipper adds to the overall. They spell Hells Angels California. They use a uh, capital A and N. Uh, then it says reinvent your mundane style in the most flattering way. Unfreaking real. The leathercity.com. So hopefully some of the clubs out there can uh, you know go check it out and hopefully buying something what's going on here and there's where my stuff popped up uh 20 off thanks you know thanks for giving 20 percent off man <laughs> so let's go to families of the victims in randolph crash reach settlement which trucking companies insure her uh let me take a quick look over there yeah we're all right right now uh an insurer for the trucking company involved in a deadly crash in Randolph last year has reached a settlement with the estates of seven motorcyclists killed, a survival, a survivor and a widow, and an attorney involved in the agreement said. Well, you know what? That's one thing that uh, is less off the minds of those that were affected by this. Uh, Pilgrim Insurance Company, the insurer for Westfield Transport, will divide a $1 million payout between the parties, which will receive varying amounts, said uh, Chuck Douglas, an attorney for Mary Lou Welch, the widow of Albert Mazza Jr., a motorcyclist killed in the crash. So $1 million divided by... Oh, my God. You know what? That's probably a, was the biggest coverage that they had. That's all they can get out of the insurance company. Now they got to go after Westfield. Uh, they employed the driver facing negligent homicide charges in the crash that killed the seven motorcyclists. Uh, as part of the settlement, a lawsuit that Pilgrim Insurance filed in federal court was dismissed. Lawsuits uh, filed against Westfield Transport and State Courts uh, in New... What? In New Hampshire and Massachusetts will also be a dismissed? Whose lawyer did you get? 
Douglas said the insurance payout that the families are receiving is far from satisfactory, but it was the only cons of, uh, compensation available to them, and you get 30%. Westfield Transport is no longer in business. That's what I thought. Uh, quote, it's a very inadequate amount, but it's all we could go do given the limitation. I don't understand. I really don't. If you're insuring that business and they got a driver that shouldn't be driving, you're... I'm so sorry to hear that for the family. So sorry. Uh, the victims were... Uh, that pisses me off. We're members of the Jarheads Motorcycle Club, an organization composed of Marine veterans. Uh, the driver who has pleaded not guilty is scheduled to go on trial next year. Uh, the documents released earlier this week by the National Transportation Safety Board say the driver told investigators that he used heroin and cocaine on the day of the crash, but did not feel that he was impaired when the crash happened. That right there is a travesty. Travesty. Now, MCN, uh, Harley Davidson, Pan America is getting closer, they claim. Milwaukee's Adventure Bike on Tour in Europe ahead of 2021 release. And I gotta say, it's a good looking machine right there. Really good looking machine. Problem is, I really do not think it's gonna take a, a bite out of the off road uh, industry because a lot of people, they have a friggin', uh, you know, grudge against Harley Davidson, especially in that life. Uh, when Harley-Davidson Harley brought a near-production-ready Pan America to Isama last year, we expected it to be landing in dealers right about now. But then in May, with the coronavirus pandemic in full swing and a change in Harley's senior management, it was announced that we would have to wait till 2021. Uh then it all went quiet, and as we watched as HD other models, the Bronx was canceled. That was a stupid mistake. Uh, of course, the Dines. Uh, and the Sportster range fell victim to Euro 5 legislation. Uh, they were wondering, but now fresh images have emerged from across Europe with where the Pan America has been doing the rounds on a tour of dealerships for people to come and see it ahead of next year. I have to say it's a badass looking bike, man. Uh, water cooled it looks like. It's got a nice, real nice setup. Really nice. Uh, and it, they go on to say it doesn't look like HD have made any uh, visible changes from the version uh, in Italy in 2019 and it still has a big uh, TFT dash multi-button uh, switch gear adjustable screen, cruise control, heated grips, Brembo brakes, and some level of electronic suspension adjustability. And the new engine is, it will be making about 145 uh, BF uh, horsepower, 90 foot of torque, uh, which, you know, is, you know, about equal to the BMW R1250GS, but I don't ever see the, uh, the Pan American taking on the, uh, the R20 or the R1250GS, my fault. Uh, yeah, it's a good looking bike. You know, I, I gotta agree with that, but I just don't see it going anywhere. Now, let's go to Auto Revolution. Indian beating Harley Davidson baggers. Yes, the did you guys see the bagger races? Man, these are badass. Uh, and let's see here. Last weekend, of course, a flock of thirteen baggers uh, took uh, to the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Senca uh, to compete in the first ever drag specialties King of the Baggers event. Of the 13, only two were Indian motorcycles, with the remaining 11 belonging to Harley-Davidson Road and Street Glide. Uh, it was the first time baggers were raced this way on the famous track. Thus, the event was a spectacle in itself from the get-go. But knowing that two Indians will be taking on a small army of Harleys for the win drew in the crowds like crazy. According to the numbers provided by Indian... The King of Baggers race was watched online by some 2 million people and attracted more than 30,000 Facebook shares. 
for a niche event that surely is some type of record. Quote, watching 13 baggers uh, carbon through uh, the famed corkscrew was a special moment in motorcycle racing. It was, man. It was a badass race. Uh, that said, watching the new Indian Challenger defeat 11 highly modified Harley Davidsons was a monumental achievement and dramatic validation for the work our product designers and engineers have put into developing the ENG, uh, the Indian Challenger. Indian's got it going on. Polaris is kicking ass out there, man. It really is. Uh, there was only two, and uh, they beat the rest, man. Uh, the first uh, place was Indian. Part of the Moto America Superbike Speed Fest last week, uh, Ray saw the two Indians ridden by Tyler O'Hara and Frankie Garcia going all out against the Harleys. Despite some mechanical issues early on, O'Hara managed to climb to the top of the podium while uh, Garcia finished third. That's a badass. Two in the top three, man. Holy crap. Hell yeah, man. Uh, you can watch it in the full video uh, the, on uh, Auto Alert evolution uh, if you want to check that out that's badass man now harley uh, davidson's live wire shows drag racing's future in speed of silence i don't believe that there's no way Wee! yeah right ever uh let's see here uh science of speed looks at how electric vehicle propulsion will change the sport of drag racing by comparing a 2020 Harley Davidson FX DR to a 2020 uh, Harley Davidson Livewire, with the Livewire motorcycle's immediate torque and seamless twist and goal acceleration, the racers are immediately aware of what the future of fast can bring. More time for preparation before launch, thrilling instant acceleration and seamless speed to the finish line. Ah, who's going to go watch Electric Motorcycles Drag Race, man? It's about freaking smelling the freaking nitro and all that. Come on. Uh, on September 4th, 2020, Samty, a uh, three-time Pro Stock Motorcycle Champion, set new records for elapsed time and top speed by an electric-powered production motorcycle with the live wire on a drag racing course. She stepped off her Harley-Davidson FXDR. Uh, pro stock competition motorcycle to pilot the live wire bike. She then proceeded to capture world record breaking runs on the corner in the eighth. Uh, then she covered the eighth distance mile in 7.01 seconds and the full quarter mile course in just 11.15. Wow. Hmm. She went 110 miles an hour. Uh, the top speed is 110 miles an hour. Uh, wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Uh, the Harley Davidson Live Wire motorcycle is an all new, all electric model designed to uh, offer riders a thrilling and high performance motorcycle experience infused with a new level of technology. Rock on, but I don't see it, man. I don't see it. Now, Corey Graff's Wallace Shames, Stockton police officer arrested for suspected DUI. The off-duty Stockton PD officer was uh, driving the wrong way on I-5 when he was pulled over. No, they wouldn't do that. Uh, in the early hours of Friday morning, Stockton police officers arrested one of their own colleagues on DUI. Uh, Stockton police officer Eduardo Silva was off duty when he was pulled over for driving the wrong way on Interstate 5 near 8 Mile Road. Uh, a Stockton uh, police officer said they noticed his car driving on the wrong way and pulled him over. Uh, the California Highway Patrol also responded. Uh, for now, he uh, has been arrested and booked in the San uh, Quinn uh, County Jail on DUI charges. There's this photo and stuff like that. <laughs> Freaking slut. Anyway, here we go again. New Jersey police officer sected or sexted 18 year old he arrested. A Neptune City police officer sent sexually suggestive text messages to an 18-year-old woman hours after he arrested her earlier this month. Damien uh, Brochart, 29, a five-year police veteran, faces charges of cyber harassment and hindering his own apprehension. 
The officer was suspended without pay from his position with the department. Uh, he was pull he pulled over a woman uh, leading to her arrest for unspecified drug charges and motor vehicle offenses. After she was processed, the officer drove her back to her car, deactivated his body camera and mobile video recorder, and asked the woman for her phone number. Quote, after releasing the victim from custody, uh, Brochart, while still on duty, sent the victim a text message followed by additional text messages which turned sexual in nature. Brochart sent messages, quote, indicating he thought she was cute and he would like to pay her back for everything, according to the prosecutor's office. Brochart went on to send sexually explicit messages and attempted to meet with the victim at her home after his shift ended, but she refused and abruptly ended the communication. The woman blocked his number, however, he called her three times from the police department and left messages asking her to call him back. She did not respond to his calls. In a statement, Neptune City Police Chief Matthew Quagala said his department acted immediately when they learned of the allegations, launched an internal investigation, and notified the county prosecutor's office. Quote, this type of behavior will not be tolerated and has no place within the Neptune City Police Department and the entire law enforcement community. Well, they're starting to grab these guys, man. Uh, interesting stuff right there. Always something with sex, man. Uh, but let's go on to uh, my final thoughts right after this break. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Okay, welcome back, welcome back. I want to give a shout out to our new Insane Throttle Throttle Club members. Viking Bastards, Ed, CWB, Little Mama. A lot of these are over on our Hollywood and China Dow show, which we really appreciate. G8, Dog, Donna, or Dewana as I have always called her, but it's Donna. Uh, Jimmy Schrader, Harm, Harm. Henry, thanks uh, for coming. Ironhead and Lady Ironhead, no and Corey Graff, man, you guys will see them in the, the chat rooms all the time. They are, you know what, been with me and been with the throttle a very long time. I really appreciate it. Now, if you're a throttle member, don't forget, you got to email me your address. Your email address I'm talking about here. That way I can add you to the Zoom chat room. That is where... The members only Zoom chat will be each month. That way we just sit around, you know, we all, it's a video app, so you have to have a phone, the app, whatever. It's free, by the way, Zoom. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what's going on in the scene and all that good stuff. It's a good way for me to get to know all the, the subscribers and stuff, have a good time, the whole nine yards. Uh, if you want to be a member of the Throttle Club, just hit that join button on the channel and it'll take you through different programs we got. We got one level at $199 and then another at $999. Uh, so get on over there and join if you want to get involved. And I do want to you know, give shout outs to the people that have been donating ver uh, via Cash App at Dollar Sign Motorcycle Madhouse, our Super Chatters. Uh, Jiggy, all you guys are kick-ass, man. I really appreciate all the support during these hard times with uh, all the new social media stuff going on right now. Anyway, uh, my monologue should have said it all when it comes to buying these uh, motorcycle club patches online. And that one statement that that one website says, we want to make sure we take care of our customers. 
you know, that's an oxymoron right there because you're going to get your customers hurt. I can't even believe now, and it's probably cheap leather, by the way. It's probably not even real leather. Uh, they're claiming to put these patches on leather jackets and sell them for like 185 freaking dollars, man. They're banking uh, while the club ain't getting their dues. And while, you know, you walk around at looking like a damn fool for buying this crap. You know, people bleed. People go to prison for this stuff. And you're going to sit there and just buy one of their patches. You know, it always amazed me, and this is what probably happens with these type of guys. They won't go anywhere near a biker event. They'll just go to places they know and tell people, yeah, I'm this, I'm that. See? See my vest? The BS the whole time, and that tells you about the person that they are. If they're doing that, don't ever trust them because they're a bunch of freaking liars, man. They have no pride in themselves. They have no respect for anybody else uh, that's put the work in for that patch. So, as you can see, man, uh, hopefully the members got to see some of uh, the places where that's happening at. And maybe, hopefully, they'll get something going on where they can get that taken care of. Uh, you know what? I'm heartbroken for those families in the New uh, Hampshire 7 case. One million dollars uh, divided up by seven, knowing damn well the lawyer gets 30% of that. Uh, it's basically nothing, and they lo they lost their loved one. Pilgrim Insurance, I, if you have them, you know what? Do me a favor and uh, find somebody else to go to, man, because that's just outrageous. And then you have to say, well, Westport Transport's out of business. Well, they probably uh, went to an uncle or a cousin, because that's what Eastern Blocks do. Put it in somebody else's name, and they're right back in business, man. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the trucking industry regarding regulations, if you ask me. Uh, because this shouldn't be allowed. But those families got next to freaking nothing. And, of course, everybody skates now. Well, you know, you can't sue this driver because he got nothing. So hopefully he gets uh, what's coming to him in the form of that justice. And, you know, let's just c keep our fingers crossed. Uh, as far as the Pan America is concerned, I really think it's a nice looking bike. Problem is, I don't think the off-roaders are going to take to it. You know, uh, I didn't see the price point on it. So that's going to be a surprise when it comes out uh, to the off-roaders. I can already guarantee. Look at what how the live wire and all that shit came out. And everybody was surprised with that price point. I guarantee they're going to do the same with the Pan America. Uh, they're going to price it way up there. The And the ones that off-road the most are, what is it, 18 to, uh, I don't know, about 35 is the most popular. I'm just guessing there. As far as the age range that really like riding them motorcycles, so I don't think they're gonna go for a price hit like they with the live wire. Uh, you know, I can't believe they're talking about that's the future of drag racing. There ain't no damn way, man. I love the smell of gas. I love the smell of freaking alcohol. You get out of here. You're kidding me. You think that's the the future? Yeah, I just see John Force piling in a funny car on freaking electric down the drag strip. Are you shitting me? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I don't think uh, Harley's really going to get into that market, man, uh, the off-road market. And Adam Sandoval's talked about it as well, where, you know, Harley Davidson's looked down upon in that uh, segment of the, of the biker population. So we're just going to have to see where it goes with that launch. And I'm sure you agree that. The live wire don't have a place on the drag strip right now. You know, maybe a uh, hundred years from now, you know, I have no idea, but it sure the hell ain't now. Uh, so, uh, but the wall of shame speaks for itself. Don't forget to go over to Hollywood and China Dow's uh, channel. Check it out. Uh, you guys really love the last live, man. We, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, damn, man, you're cracking. I was like, that's almost every day over at the Hollywood and China Dow show, man, because it's a whole different show and stuff. So we get to do a lot more, uh, you know, instead of the niche stuff that I do over here. So we, it's a whole different deal over there. So with that, again, thanks to our new Throttle uh, Club members. You guys rock and roll, man. Get that email addresses to me uh, through info at insanethrottlebikernews.com so I can add you to the Zoom stuff. Don't forget to check the, the community tab out for the members only. I'll be doing member only posts. 
as well as a member only live stream and i will get you those dates coming soon so with that i'll talk to you guys later you guys be good or not be good man uh good luck on election day for your candidate hi this is china doll from hollywood and china doll evening show join us monday through friday 7 p.m central standard time on spotify apple Podcasts, and youtube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment see you there boys